Joining me today are two special guests, Sumali Montano, who is a creator, producer, and actress in the sci-fi feature film, The Deal. And joining her is Lisa Brenner, who is the producer and actress in the film. And welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I love the film, The Deal. Are we ready to take the deal? So <laughs> I, I have to tell you, just I loved it. As I said, but watching it, I'm thinking, am I ready to take the deal? Like, <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, um, Somali, what inspired you to create this film? Like, like the idea and, you know, because you're also the actress, you're the producer, the writer. So tell us what, what the process was like. Um. In the shortest, the shortest answer I can give you is uh, for my mom. This, uh, oh. this was my love song to her. And, you know, at the core of this film, this story is really about a mother's love for her daughter and uh, their mutual desperation to protect one another, no matter what it takes. And so in many ways, the character that I played, Tala, is really based on my own mother and so the project is dedicated to women like her and people who would do anything for those that they love. Um, it was a, a very special, heartfelt project and process for me. And I was really, really fortunate to have teamed up with Lisa and her husband, Dean, to make it. Um, it was just a, it was really such a dream team. Yeah, so it's like the film is futuristic, it's science wise drama, there's a family, you know, we, t you know, we're taken through the family unit, and then the father is, is, comes back, then he takes off, there's a twist at the end, like he takes off, and I'm like, come back, come back, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so how did you maintain your stamina, like, to you both, question to you both, I mean, it's such a, there's a lot of um, running around, there's a lot of you know, you're doing like Lisa yourself, you're the actress and producer. So tell us, how did you maintain your stamina for, to both of you? Well, for me, um, from the moment I read the script, it, to me, it was a mother daughter story. I mean, luckily it was set in the sci-fi world. So my job throughout the, throughout the whole process was to maintain the integrity of that relationship. Um, I actually wasn't planning to be in it. Um, but same actress, here, same here. <laughs> she doesn't either. It just kind of fate took a interesting turn. And um, the woman I, I believe we originally cast um, to play the role that I played fell out about two weeks before. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Twist <Aww>. my arm. <laughs> so, um, and that's how I actually got in it. But that wasn't my intention for making this movie. My intention was to help Sumali realize this incredible um, dream. And we brought it to my husband and Electric Entertainment. And it was a perfect marriage of the feminist mother-daughter story and the sci-fi action world. And I think we achieved it. I believe we did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so this is the first yeah. time you've worked together? Um, we knew each other as moms. Before. Yes. And uh, Lisa had actually acted with my husband, who um, calls himself a retired actor now, but they had <laughs> acted together. And uh, that was the beginning of our relationship. Yeah. But this is, this for me was really special because it, for, you know, I've been an actor, you know, for 20 years in Hollywood and, and have so many projects that I'm just an actor on. And then the last several years, I've been focusing on producing. And I have several films now that I've produced, but not acted in so this one was really special because oh. I got to do both and I, I could not have done that without the amazing team that we put together yeah, so stam stamina yes but it doesn't <laughs> happen without the team without multiple villages <laughs> yes and it takes a team right and like what was your favorite part in the film a question to both of you oh. I'll let you answer that first Lisa <laughs> oh my gosh I there's so there's so many I mean um Oh God, I mean, there's the funny parts. There's, you know, I think the apartment scene, the goodbye scene. Yeah. Might be one of my favorites just because the acting on both ends was so incredible that I cannot watch that scene without crying every single time. Oh my God. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, it's so truthful. And anyone who's had a mother or <laughs> had a child, like I feel anyone could connect to that. Or just had someone you love that you need to say goodbye to. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah I think that I really appreciate having that, you know, we we made a film that has such a universal set of core themes and values. You know, it's really about, you know, it, it whoever you are, if you've loved someone deeply and would do anything for them, you can relate to this film. Um uh, I will say for me that what the scene that I think encapsulates it's it's my favorite for the reason that I think it encapsulates what we were trying to do um, is that scene when Tala goes to the Bureau of Life to ask for an extension on her time, and I love it so much because you see her desperation to do what it takes to save her daughter, juxtaposed by this world and the Bureau of Life, the government reacting to her with zero compassion, zero empathy. And you see the cruelty of this society. And it's just so normalized. You know, the fact that she even cares about watching, you know, another family get literally torn apart when the father has to go away for his processing date. Uh, and the people at the bureau are just like, yeah, all in a day's work, you know? Yeah. Yes. It's like natural, right? They don't have no empathy, as you said. And but it's also a film that it, you know talks about explores food shortages, uh, global warming. It's it's like something you can really take away from the film and make you think: Are you going to accept the deal? Are you ready to take the deal? Is it a curse? Well, it's a gift in one way, right? Because you're going to get a job and you're going to be fed. <laughs> but in the end, it's it's sort of you have to go and die, or you know, go to yeah. end your 20, life. 20 years, 20 years for a life, you get 20 years of food and resources and a job, and then you you give up your life. Yeah, but you realize 20 years goes by quite fast. Yeah. yeah, and we thought that when we were making this, it was going to be about global warming and resources, but we made this before the actual pandemic. We're wow. like, we're then we're like, this could be real. Yeah. And, and we could never have predicted what was about to happen the next year. I still, yeah, I still think back, you know, thank God Dean, you know, Dean pushed us. We had a couple reshoots that we wanted to get in and we got them done December of 2019. Wow. December, 2019. Yeah. Just we had, yeah, right before the world changed and it was, uh, it was wild. So to me, it's, it's, it's really fascinating that now, you know, this is, this is a post pandemic story um so you can really see like what you were saying you know this is you get to really think about you know society and where we might be post pandemic and the deal offers us a view into that yeah so, i mean it's also suspenseful drama scary when you think like oh where am i gonna get my food <laughs> or or you know in the family units it, it's it's just a uh, so the film is for everyone really it's um you know and what would you want people to take away from the film, Smalley. <laughs> well, um, you know, I, I mean, I think we, I, I think we covered it. I think it's, it's the universality of, of love. What it's like, you know, when you're taking care of someone who's sick or dying. When, when you're willing to do whatever it takes um, to help your loved ones. And then the, and then the kind of warning or societal critique of. You know, what happens when you have a world where cruelty is so normalized? Um, I think those two things and, you know, I, I'll add in one other, which is um, I was I'm really proud that we were able to make something in a genre that doesn't uh, normally center women, intergenerational women of different ages, women of color. And so, you know, to me, it's really important to to center characters with different perspectives that we're not historically used to seeing because that generates empathy. And yes. at the end of the day, that's, you know, that's to me, that's the goal to help people feel, to be empathetic, um, to add more love to this world. Yes. I mean, indeed, you, you get the feeling of, of everything. It just, it touches you and it makes you cry. Like, you know, you're in, but were, were there any challenges at all in making the film that um, there are many challenges. Where do we start? 
Well, um, I mean, just our location. Um, you know, originally we weren't thinking Serbia, but yes. you know, um, thankfully we have been an incredible crew in Serbia, and we were able to do things to make a, you know, a huge what would in America to shoot here would be a huge budget picture for very a lower budget in Serbia, but that that was a big um, uh, problem, but a great solution, incredible sets, incredible people. Um, so that worked out perfectly for the film. Yeah, I think it's 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 so funny. You know, at the time is really hard and there's all kinds of um, every day there's a little fire to put out or a big fire to put out. Uh, but now on the other end of things, um, it, it's just literally the fact that we got it. We got it made. We got it made, which, uh, it, you know, in Hollywood, um, it's not uh, it's not an easy thing to get a movie made that centers that centers women like this like this does in such a, a rich, amazing sci-fi world. Um, you know, so it, it it's kind of like no matter how you feel about the genre, the story is universal, and to get to make a movie like that is is really special. Yes, congratulations! Perfect timing, and and I love the music. How did you select the music? Um, do you want to speak to that or you I can. Um, you good. Oh, oh yeah. Um I the, the music was such an interesting um an interesting evolution. You know, yeah. we have a uh we um have a very European, I think, feel too to the film because of our amazing director, a brilliant Hungarian woman, um, or she Nagipal. Uh and I to me the music um strikes a really nice uh balance between what we tried to do having this intimate heartfelt story between a mother and daughter in this big sci-fi world you know i think orshi uh, and our cinematographer mate urbe really created something that feels intimate and then and then it's kind of supported by this music that is to me a little bit more accessible it's a little bit more um not accessible but more kind of relatable to an American ear as like, okay, this is like big sci-fi world. And so you kind of got both sides of intimate with um with big with big sci-fi feels. That's how I see it. Yeah. And I think keeping Jola the excitement did, going. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think Jola Duca did amazing, amazing work. Yeah. Oh, it's it's really it just takes you through the film and, and I would want to watch it again. And and I have to ask you both. Will it be the deal too? Well, <laughs> from your lips, from your lips to God's ears. <laughs> I think our ultimate goal is to possibly do a series. Yeah. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. I think that would be our um, our next step because we left a lot of loose ends open yeah. for that. Absolutely. And I like to I like to think that our ending is just the perfect. It is the perfect <laughs> step to go on into a series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add? Question to both of you. I'm just really proud um, to be part of this very unique, it's almost like a new genre we're creating where women are the sci-fi heroes, but not sci-fi in, in the world we're used to of, you know, muscles and brawn and tight costumes it's mm. women who lead with their head and heart and intelligence and um i will leave it up to you to say whether they succeed or not <laughs> yeah no i think lisa said it perfectly i would love to see um i would love to see the deal too or the series i would love to see more content that centers women of intergenerational ages and women of color um, I think it's, I think it's really important, especially in the world that we're in, to build more empathy. Well, that's wonderful. And it's going to be on the Roku channel, right? And Russell and you don't need a, you don't even need a Roku device to watch it, which is Good. wonderful. You literally have, to, you do might, you might have to give them an email. The first time I tried to watch it on Roku, I didn't have to do that, but you might have to give them an email address, set up a, set up a free account, but you can watch it from, from your device. Oh, it was a pleasure to speak to you both. And thank you so much. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank it's you lovely so to speak with you. Thank you.